In this video I'm going to give you the next of the engineer battle drills and that will be breaching a roll minefield with hand emplaced explosives. The particular one I'm showing here which is not to scale is a complex obstacle. We have wire then mines so we will have two different breaches that will have to go in one right after the other. Now with any like with any other breach operation you need to make sure you establish saucer, suppress obscure secure reduce, suppress enemy fires with your own direct and indirect fires, obscure the area with smoke or some other form of obscuration, secure the area in front of and behind the obstacle, meaning take out the enemy positions, and then you call in for the engineers for reduce the breach of the obstacle. Now, it is always preferable that you bypass rather than breach an obstacle. That is the job of your scouts. If they cannot find a bypass or the one that they found leads to an obvious trap, then you're committed to having the breach. Your next step then would be mechanical means. So some type of breaching vehicle like an ABV, an assault breach vehicle, or a CV combat engineer vehicle or their equivalents overseas like a uh, Russian IMR. Behind that you will have your mine plows, your mine rollers, and the engineers Miklik mine clearing line charge. Now if you don't have those assets they're committed somewhere else or you not going to use them at this time, they're going to be neither needed further up, you'll have to do hand in place. But always realize that hand in place breach is always a last resort. We have our SOS is established by the, man the maneuver element, the infantry, the armor, or the cav. So the engineers are called up. They will stop their vehicle, either an armored personnel carrier or a truck, a minimum of 50 meters back from the wire. The breach team will dismount. Like with any other breach, the minimum number of people on the ground that's needed for this operation. So one single breach team, it'll be our alpha team, our squad leader, the assistant team leader, Rifleman, who is our grappler, the auto rifleman, and the squad designated marksman. Squad leader points out to the assistant team leader and the grappler where the breach point is going to be. The grappler then tosses his crow's foot left, right, then straight up the middle, and he keeps going up the middle until he gets that grapnel hook into the wire then he tugs on the wire to set off any trip wires, mines that are connected to the wire. He then moves forward to the wire and starts trying to unhook that grapnel hook while staying as low to the ground as he possibly can. The team leader will move forward with two bangalores. He and the grappler then get those bangalores put in, in a V-shape because you're trying to make a vehicle lane so you're going picket to picket. You want at least 4.5 meters wide, preferably 6 to 8. The team leader then ties in the initiation system while the grappler is running back with the grapple. When he gets back here, he starts pulling in the rope, gets it all bundled up. He passes it off to someone inside the APC, your backup grappler, 
and that person will start resetting it as best he can. The squad leader, when he gets the signal from the team leader up on the site that the initiation system is tied in, he calls it up or has it signaled that the breach is ready. He gets permission, he signals it out to the assistant team leader to pop the igniters. He then hauls butt back. And as soon as he's back here with the rest of the team, everybody mounts up onto the vehicle and then they pull back to a safe distance. Wait for the count for the countdown to finish and the explosion. The explosion happens. We breach the wire. Vehicle moves back up. Once again, your breach team dismounts. The squad leader, the assistant team leader, our grappler, the rifleman, the automatic rifleman, squad designated marksman. The grappler does not need to throw a crow's foot at this time. He moves forward to just short of the wire because he has not grappled behind the wire. So there's still the possibility there could be trip wires back here. The grappler then starts moving through. Now, tied to the grappler's back, or connected I should say, will be a carabiner or a D-ring. And then connected on to it will be a deck cord line main. At a minimum, it should be a double overhand knot. This would be connected to the back of his gear. Open up the carabiner, take the hook, the loop, hook it in, and he pulls that through. I knew a lot of people that would double these loops so there would be two wraps that would be on the carabiner pulling it out, creating our line main while he's grappling through. Once he's past the rear row of mines, he stops, he signals back that he's through. You now have your demo team move forward, which would be your squad designated marksman and your assistant team leader. They will move forward all the way to the end. They will unhook the deck cord from the back of the grappler. The grappler then runs back with that grapnel hook all the way to the vehicle, trailing the rope behind him, and he pulls it in when he gets to the vehicle. Now your demo team up here, while that's going on, they start putting in their charges. They put in their charges to the inside of the mines, meaning the side of the mine that's facing the line main. And they put a charge next to each mine, trying to make that six to eight meter wide path. Their branch lines would get tied in to the line main. While they're doing that, the squad leader's down here with the reel. He cuts it. And then the automatic rifleman reels in any excess deck cord that was not used. Once the mines are tied in, the squad designated marksman returns to the vehicle and mounts up. The assistant team leader and the squad leader then tie in the initiation system. And they call it up.
signal back that everything's ready. They get the uh, signal to pop the igniters, they pop it. They all come back, mount up on the vehicle, the vehicle pulls back while the igniters are burning. They do the countdown, the mines go off, creating our path. Once that's done, the vehicle pulls forward again, and they can pull farther forward this time, so they can pull forward to the just short of the wire. The squad leader then dismounts, and he proofs the lane for any unexploded ordnance, any unexploded mines. If he finds any, like right here, we have a mine that did not go off, the charge did not detonate, the branch line was cut, either by shrapnel or it was doubled over and it cut itself instead of detonating. He then places a pop and drop charge next to the mine, trying to blow it to the outside. That's why you put the charges to the inside of the mines. You're trying to blow the mines to the outside or set them off. So he does the same thing. He then signals we got another charge going. That pop and drop charge will be on a very short fuse, say somewhere between 15 to 30 seconds. He then hauls rear to the back of the vehicle, jumps in, they pull back a ways, they wait for that, that blast, they then move forward, the squad leader then moves up, proofs the lane, he goes down, makes sure everything's clear. It is, he signals them back here, they then do their markings, push through, pull to the side so that the infantry, the armor, and the calf can start pouring through. Marking a breach lane is a separate battle drill. I will cover that in a different video. Now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot Militia Movement, always remember, SAONS.